I have the pleasure of actually hosting um, a very strong panel of uh, what I'd like to call a hub of experts from the transport world who are going to share their inspiration with us and some of the challenges that they've been facing. I think it's fair to say um, my background is very much through shopping centre development, retail, but the last five to eight years I've been working pretty focused on transport hubs. And the reason I chose to go into that area is I've seen some of the most exciting retail developments coming out of transport. And I think perhaps, if, if I'm being very frank with our real estate friends and funds here, there are a lot of lessons we can learn from what's happening in transport hubs. If you think back 10 years ago, the only thing that someone would say about Heathrow is, I'd better get there as early as possible because there's a good chance I'm going to be in a very, very long queue. Now, we've made great strides uh, in... Uh, in that field now and I can, I can guarantee to you that we are now 95% compliant on less than five minute queues. No one believes me about that, but I can guarantee that it's true. Now the difference that that has made is that, the, and, and the great irony is, is that people shop at, um, at airports, but it's a secondary spend opportunity. They're not there to shop, they're there to fly. And now that we've become more operationally efficient, what you would have expected was at now, that's great because people spend less time processing and more time within the shopping area. Unfortunately, what has happened is people are now turning up to the airport later and later. So what we have to do now is to embrace the different ways of letting our passengers know about our offer. Because we have been heavily reliant on the past on just purely the fact that people are there they don't have anything to do, they're waiting for their flight, and they browse the offer and we get some impulse purchases. So we've been historically very, very lucky. We're also benefiting from an extremely high socioeconomic demographic group. Um, but these days, with the rise of content, I can sit anywhere I want and watch Netflix. I don't have to get up out of my seat. So we have to work even harder now to activate our passengers to get them to circulate through our offer. One of the ways that we're doing that is through a massive improvement to our digital presence. And it's not about selling online, it's about pre-awareness. We want to let our passengers know what offer we have before we, they get to the airport. Now this is just the first stage. This is so that they understand what they can buy, they can be thinking about it, they can be, start to engage with their offer before they've even got to that security process. and then. And then the stage after that will be to create a uh, click and reserve offer. And I'm sure many of you in the shopping centre industry are thinking, well, this is quite, quite old hat. But for, in the airport context, this is, this is really important. Uh, I will uh, uh, now come to the new Istanbul airport project. Uh, it is planned to be the biggest airport in the world by the time it opens. It will open in second quarter of 2018. Uh, it will have 200 million annual capacity per year and our company, our consortium, will have 25 years uh, for the operation. We have signed the largest duty-free agreement in the industry with Unifree Duty-Free. Heinemann is a partner uh, in that company. We will make 10 billion euro investment for the ultimate phases and we will pay 26 billion euros, including VAT, to the Turkish government. And by the time it opens, it will have 100,000 employees. So our project is not just an airport, but a city, an aerotropolis, and there is an airport inside of it. We will have hotels, offices, expo centers, um, shopping malls, theme parks, logistics. So it will uh, be a new global destination for the, all the uh, world travelers. This is the airport's city master plan. We are allocating 12 million square meter of land for this development. Uh, and we will have 200,000 uh, square meter of GLA for the retail, both in airport and in airport city. We will have retail boulevard, retail plaza, car park plaza, and the retail inside the terminal. And so we are creating a, a sense of place and differentiating each places from each other. For example, this is a retail boulevard. It is like Champs-Élysées or uh, other famous cities, uh, streets in cities. This is the retail plaza, more concentrated, a different retail experience. 
and also when you come inside the terminal, it is a other uh, experience. So our airport city is not for only travelers, but also the uh, people that come to Istanbul uh, for uh, for a vacation. Uh, why Alta is here? Uh, we are. Um developing two uh, railway stations, uh, Montparnasse and Austerlitz, and we already manage two railway stations, uh, Gare du Nord and Gare de l'Est in Paris. So in a world of increasing mobility in public transport, people want to optimize every moment of their travel. That's why railway stations have to be transformed into high quality living spaces by transferring our experience in shopping center to the well uh, of railways. What makes people uh, interesting is that they are available, uh, they come often, uh, and are nearly as captive as uh, in an airport. This makes railway station a strategic market for the development of ret retailer. This is a magic world, the magic world of footfall, because uh, as example, uh, when you are uh, speaking about uh, Gare du Nord, we have already 285 million users per year. Uh, so the matter for retailer uh, already in the station is not to, find, to, to create footfall, and uh, our matter is not to create footfall. The matter is uh, to converting commuters and travelers to consumers. And for example, uh, we know that 68% uh, of travelers buy regular food during their travel. You have only to catch this uh, market. The opportunity uh, for, tra uh, for retailers to meet a new public and gain new consumers. That's why railway stations have to be transformed into high quality living spaces. Uh, um, Mainly, uh, all uh, railway station in Paris has more than 100, 100 years, and so if you want to modernize, you have to transform them. We can, uh, we have, uh, with our experience uh, for the, on the two stations we have uh, under management, uh, we know that the turnover, the average turnover of uh, in the retail is 13 euro per square meter per year, better than best shopping center. It is through this extensive direct involvement in retail that the Samsung Global Consumer Insights Group is able to chart the changes in the retail behavior of our customers. And then having analyzed that data for our own purposes, we're then able to bring insights and ideas to our customers in the retail world. And of course, we are being challenged by our consumers daily. I think what we find is that the co consumer today is very time challenged, and in order to excite them and really motivate them, we need to give them an in-store experience that really is a truly wow factor. Very interestingly, uh, when Under Armour CEO Kevin Plank was designing the new store in Shanghai, he asked that it deliver 80% experience and 20% product. And I think what is really insightful there is that we see that today's retailers are seeing themselves as entertainers as well. And that the most successful retailers in the store experience space are providing a truly engaging retail experience. And I think, speaking to your point, what Heathrow is doing and what airports is doing is really elevating the standard of what we see in digital today and is really driving our other retail customers to provide the same exciting experiences. If you are very strong in a market, but if you are not present in the airport of that country, you are not the leading brand uh, in that market of the segment you are trying into. So we are created in 94. We are owned by one woman, 60, with the energy of three 20-year-olds. Uh, our fashion focus, okay, that's one question that everybody asks us, is what's your segment? Uh, even airports, where do you want to be positioned? And I say, our segment is women that like fashion. Either if they are uh, with a lot of money, with not a lot of money, uh, young, old, they have to like fashion. They read the magazines, 
they read the trends, they know the formats, they know the colors of the season, and that's what we are delivering in our stores. This is our offer, fashion accessories in general. Uh, our design teams are based in Porto and in Barcelona. There is a story that I won't tell you because the, port the brand is Portuguese, the name is French, and the main design center is in Barcelona. It's a little bit of globalization thing inside of the company. The offer has to be adapted to the new reality of the travelers. Uh, the small city, stable population that the airports are looking like. The shopping center offer that they are starting to deliver along with the free time that people are mentally ready to enjoy and to spend money because they are traveling, they don't have time or because they are in business or because they are traveling in leisure and they are focused, oh, okay, I can spend because I'm going on holidays. This leads to the success of travel retail. We are experiencing and I'm sure all the train stations and the airports here present are experiencing also.